There are crucial rotational movements between tibia and femur during bending and straightening of the knee. Often we say that knee joint is mostly a hinge. It is true and there is an important rotational movement as well. Frequently we say twisting of the knee is something bad, something to avoid. This is funny because proper twist of the knee joint during the flexion and extension is essential for its health and proper functioning. The devil is in the detail and not only the devil but God, truth, healing is in the detail. Let's take a look at what's called screw home mechanism of the knee joint. In order to comprehend this mechanism, we need to understand the architecture of articular surfaces. Arthrokinematics, after all, dictate the path of movement. First of all, the knee joint is a ball and socket type of joint with distal femur being a ball and tibia, proximal tibia, being a socket, enhanced by the presence of menisci. Socket and ball. Ball and socket joints are governed by principle of coexistence of roll and glide depending on whether the ball is moving in the socket or socket is moving over the ball. For more details of the principle of ball and socket motion, please see, check another video devoted to this topic. What we'll focus on today is the unique shape of femoral condyle that dictates rotational component for each flexion and extension. Lateral condyle is pretty much vertical, straight. However, when you look at the medial condyle, you will see a curved path that curves inward toward the center axis of the femur. This curved path of medial condyle of the femur is one of the main causes of external rotation of tibia as it moves into a complete knee extension. It's a small yet significant amount of rotation, about 10 degrees, that allows proper locking of the knee in extension and unlocking as we begin to flex our knee from a position of complete straightness. So, simply put, the tibia rotates externally during extension, during straightness, and rotates internally when we unlock the knee, when we move from straight to bending. The reversal is also true. Femur can rotate internally or externally on the stable tibia. Screw home mechanism is an example of a coupled movement where rotation is coupled with extension and flexion. Such rotation is not an independent movement, but coexists with bending and straightening. Full extension and such locking mechanism increases an overall contact areas of tibia and femur and therefore improves stability of the knee for standing. Also worth mentioning is that lateral groove in cartilage it's closer than medial groove, making medial tibia to have a little longer path and therefore encouraging this external rotation. It's worthy to note that it's either tibia rotating over the femur or femur rotating over tibia or composition of both movements. That depends whether the 
tibia, the distal segment, is moving over proximal femur, or proximal femur is moving over standing tibia, like for example, getting up from a squat or getting up from a chair. We're dealing here with proximal to distal relationship and also uh, open chain versus closed chain mechanics. Open chain is when the distal segment tibia is free, as in kicking movement, swinging movement of the leg. Closed chain is when tibia and foot are planted, are stationary, and our femur is rotating around the stationary or mostly stationary tibia. The Feldenkrais method is founded on the precise and specific understanding and kinesthetic understanding of the skeletal movement and how entire skeleton is integrated in function, in person's function. If these ideas sound exciting and interesting to you, please join me for a three-day continuing education workshop on May 10th to 12th, 2019. I hope to see you there.